السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا إنه من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم شر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة كل ضلالة في النار أما بعد My dear brothers and sisters in Islam and dear viewers Welcome to a new episode in our series, Back to Basics, talking and elaborating on the ten nullifiers of Islam. And today we will continue, inshallah. We covered in the last episode the sixth nullifier, and that is ridiculing the deen, mocking about the deen, mocking any aspect of the deen, whether you cracking jokes about Allah the Almighty or His Messenger وسلم, or any of the messengers of Allah Azza wa Jal, this will take a person out of the fold of Islam. And we also started benefiting and deducing the benefits of that ayah, the lessons and we can learn from the ayah that Allah has to be glorified and should be glorified and should be loved by every mu'min. And here I would like to emphasize upon the importance of instilling in the hearts of our children, in the hearts of our children, the hubballah, mahabbatullah, the love of Allah, that we have to make every child cling and attach to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that they love the Creator from the beginning, and they should know that Allah is the source of our existence. He is the anchor we rely on. He is the one we should count upon, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the one we turn to when we are in need. He is the provider. He is the cherisher. He is the sustainer. Everything comes from Him, and we have to be grateful to Him. These concepts and these essential and noble qualities, we need to instill them and inculcate them in the hearts of the children. So when they grow up, they know who Allah is. They love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is part of the tarbiyah. So Allah has to be glorified. He deserves to be glorified. Why? is Rabbil Alameen. Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. He is the Lord of all the creations, all the worlds. So he deserves to be glorified, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we read and elaborated and we read the meaning of some verses that the Jews when they talked ill about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, describing Allah as one who is miser, stingy, poor. La hawla wa la quwata illa billah. Today we'll continue, insha'Allah. Also, the ayat, the verses teach us the lessons that we can deduce from these ayahs is also the respect of the deen. Respecting the deen al-Islam. You respect deen al-Islam. This deen which is the way of life. Islam is a way of life. So respect the deen al-Islam. It is the way of salvation. It is the way of the hidayah. It is the code of system that governs every aspect in our life. Everything you need, Islam is there. Islam governs every step, every aspect in your life. From the moment you open your eyes in the morning, Islam is there, teaching you what to do. Alhamdulillah, ladhi ahyana, ba'dama amatana wa ilayhi nushur. 
So it's there, teaching you, guiding you, because it is a way of life. So from the moment you open your eyes in the morning, you, the moment you just open your eyes and say, Alhamdulillah, all praise is due to Allah, who gave me life after I was dead. Yeah, you were dead. You were dead, minor death, mawta sughra. You were asleep, you were dead. The soul left you. The soul, every night, every night Allah catches the souls, our souls. Allah catches them. And they go to Allah. But they don't leave the body totally. Because if the soul leaves the body totally, that is death, major death. But minor death, they leave the body, but still there is a link between the body and the soul. So Islam is there. That's why he's reminding you. From the moment you get up in the morning, you praise Allah. Glory be to you who gave me life after I was dead. Then you head to the washroom. Islam is there with you, walking, teaching you, step by step, what to do. Beautiful deen. Teaches you, hold on now, you're going to the washroom. This washroom is the house of the devils. So, I want to protect you from them. What a beautiful deed. What a beautiful deed. You are going to enter the house of the devils, shayateen. So, Islam teaches you what to do. اللهم إني أعوذ بك من الخبث والخبائث. اللهم إني أعوذ بك من الخبث والخبث. This is the dua. Oh Allah, just before entering the toilet. Oh Allah, oh Allah, save me, save me from the males and the female devils in the toilet. That's how. Now you enter. Now you enter. Islam is there teaching you. And when you finish and you come out, Islam also there. It's a way of life telling you, glorify Allah, be grateful to Allah, say alhamdulillah, say alhamdulillah, alladhi adhar anni al-adha wa afani. Before entering the toilet, you are rushing, you are in agony, you are in pain because you want to respond to the call of nature. What, what are you, son of man? Weak, miskeen. Miskeen. You couldn't wait. Whether you are a king or a queen or a president or a dictator. <laughs> you rush to the toilet. That is a blessing. Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu used to say after coming out from the toilet, Ya laha min ni'matin qalilun shakiruha. What a blessing. But only few who are Thankful to Allah. Few. One of the uh, ulama want to teach a lesson to one of the uh, rulers to remind him about the reality of a human being. So the ruler was thirsty. They were on a journey, on a camping or hunting. So what the king or the khalifa or the ruler became so thirsty. So he asked for water. He said, I wanted water. They said, okay. And the alim, the scholar, gave him the glass of water. And they brought the water. So the scholar took the glass of water and he said, Bismillah, take. Have a sip. But before handing it over to the king, he held it. And he said, how much are you going to pay for it? How much are you? going to pay for this glass of water. He said, half of my kingdom. He said, Bismillah, drink. And when he finished, he said, Amir al-Mu'mineen, how much are you going to give if this amount of water got trapped in your bladder, the urine, and it's not coming out? How much are you going, and someone has the medicine to bring it out? How much are you going to pay? He said, Half of my kingdom said, poor king, all your kingdom is gone. All your kingdom is gone. Half of it 
for the water to drink, half of it for the water to come out. What kingdom is this? The human being is weak. So Islam teaches you when you come out from the toilet, you say Alhamdulillah, you praise Allah. So Islam is there in your life. Teaches you everything. You want to remove your garment? Say Bismillah. You want to eat? Say Bismillah. You finished eating? Say Alhamdulillah. Beautiful deen. It's there with you. You enter your car. Subhanallah. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. So that's why you have to respect this deen. What else do you want? What else? We don't need anything. It's there. Because Allah has chosen it for us. Allah. وَرَضِيتُ لَكُمْ الْإِسْلَامَ دينا. And they have chosen Islam as a way of life, as a deen for you. May Allah keep us steadfast on this beautiful deen. My dear brothers and sisters and dear viewers, stay tuned. We'll be back inshallah after the break. Let's talk. I'm your moderator. I'm your moderator. Omar Dunlap. Does Islam allow terrorism? This is unfair. This is not fair. true. Dr. Mamdu Muhammad. It's Islam is the religion Islam of Islam. Is peace. Because of the media, because of what is said about Islam. Mahmoud Atiyah. A huge amount of literature was written on the issue of what they call Islamic terrorism or fundamentalism is not a religious reason. It is a political, sociological. Let's share ideas. Let's discover the truth. We need to put our hands together to show the mainstream the Islam mainstream to people. Islam to, people. <laughs> to clear doubts, discuss problems, and find proper conclusions. A unique and contemporary chat show. Let's talk. Every Thursday at 3 p.m. and repeat telecast at 1 a.m. UK on Peace TV. Welcome back, my dear brothers and sisters and dear viewers. We were talking about the respecting Deen al-Islam before the break. Because Islam is the Deen, the way of life, which Allah chose for us. And something chose by Allah because it is so perfect. It has no imperfection. It is free from flaws, from deficiencies, shortcomings, because it is a way of life from the Almighty. So, respecting it, loving it, not ridiculing it, not cracking jokes about Islam or the Muslims, etc. For example, you find some Muslims, they crack jokes about the uh, sisters or about the brothers practicing Muslims. They see a Muslim walking on the street, they start cracking jokes about them. Oh, see, see, look, have a look, have a look, have a look, see, see, see his garment, see his thobe, he's wearing a skirt, mini jib. That's what they're saying. Cracking jokes about the Muslims, about this brother who is following the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu or a sister. See, see the ninja, 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 that one, you see, you see her on the street? Because he is covered from head to toes. One of the brothers told me, he went to a country, Muslim, and there was only one sister in that place, or that city, wearing niqab. He said she was walking in the street and the kids are clapping their hands, ninja, ninja, nin, Allah, subhanallah. Because he is the one, only one, who's wearing niqab. This is the ridiculing and mocking of the deen. This brother who's wearing short thobe or short garment, he is following the sunnah of the Prophet He loves the Prophet 
He's a role model. He's an example. You have to respect him. Because his Prophet ﷺ and our Prophet ﷺ said, Izratul Mu'min, Izratul Mu'min ila nisf al Your thawb as a man should be to half of your shin. Half of your shin. Fain aba fa ila fawq al If you feel it is not easy for you or you feel uh, a bit uh, reluctant, then don't make it below the ankles. Because whatever below the ankles is in the hellfire. So a brother who is following the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, you are mocking him? Cracking jokes about him? Or a sister who is dressed in a modest, decent dress, Islamic dress, covering her body, walking, minding her own business, instead of taking your hats, as the Englishman would say, respecting her, you are cracking jokes about her? In some Muslim countries, you know what they're saying? See that moving tent, moving tent, a tent, tent moving. About sisters who are wearing niqab. Wait, 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 wait. You are ridiculing the deen and the followers of the deen. See what will happen to you. The criminals, Allah called them criminals, mujrimeen. Those who are mocking and ridiculing the believers. Huh? See, the Quran is telling us that when they pass by the practicing Muslims, what they do? They blink their eyes to each other. See? Have a look, have a look, have a look. See, those who, they are making jokes of them. So what will happen on the day of resurrection? So those today, Ah, the believers who will be laughing at them. The believers will be laughing at them on the day of resurrection. And we, as believers, we have to be proud of our deen, proud of our sunnah, raising our heads up. Yes, brothers and sisters, be proud of this deen. Hold to it. You are strangers. We are the ghuraba. You are the strangers. And the good news for you, as the Prophet said, فَطُوبَ لِلْغُرَبَى طُوبَى Jannah, one of the names of the Jannah, or a tree in the Jannah. فَطُوبَ لِلْغُرَبَى Who are those strangers who are living in the 21st century? Who are they? أُنَاسٌ قَلِيل As the Prophet ﷺ said, أُنَاسٌ قَلِيل فِي نَاسُ سُوءُ الْكُثِيرِ Few people, very little in number, in an ocean of people. Corrupt people, immoral people. Man yasiyahum akthar min man yutiyahum. Those who disobey them, I would number those who listen and obey them. Those are the strangers. Those are the strangers. So the Prophet said, Tuva, Jannah for them. So be patient. Yes, the way to the Jannah is not easy. Hardships, difficulties. But the result is Allah's pleasure. So don't despair, don't become weak, carry on. This is the path to the Jannah. And this path to the Jannah is full of hardships and difficulties. So this is one of the lessons we should learn from the previous ayat. Glorifying Allah, respecting Allah's words, the Quran, and respecting the deen al-Islam. And also among the lessons is venerating Respecting the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Should not talk ill about him. And we should not let anyone to talk about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have to defend the honor of our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have to defend our mothers. Mother Aisha radiallahu anha. We should not let any fool talk about her. So we have to defend the Prophet ﷺ, defend his wives, defend his sunnah. This is the right of the Prophet ﷺ upon us. If someone talks ill about the Prophet ﷺ, if he is between double quotes, called himself Muslim, and he is ridiculing or insulting the Prophet ﷺ, insulting the Prophet ﷺ, then he is not a Muslim. Executed. 
This is the punishment for the one who insults the Prophet ﷺ. It is, of course, only the ruler or the state or the Sharia are the ones the judges will pass the judgment for this person, not any individual. You know, we should make it clear. But the Islamic ruling for someone who insults the Prophet ﷺ is capital punishment, execution. And no one has the right to forgive him. No one. Because this is the right of the Prophet Sallallahu And the Prophet Sallallahu did not give anyone the authority or attorney to forgive if anyone insults him or his owner. So no one has that right. So respecting the Prophet Sallallahu who doesn't speak out of his own desires. وَمَا يَنْطِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحِيٌ يُوحَىٰ Nor does he speak of his own desire. It is only a revelation revealed, inspiration received from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, among the lessons, to respect the ulama. Because the ulama, the scholars, they are our guides. They are the beacons, they are the torches of hidayah for us. So they teach us. They educate us, they show us the path, the way of salvation. The ulama, who are the inheritors of the prophets. As Allah says, يَرْفَعِ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمَ دَرَجَاتٍ وَاللَّهُ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ خَبِيرٌ The status of the ulama. قُلْ هَلْ يَسْتَوِ الَّذِينَ يَعْلَمُونَ وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will exalt the degree يَرْفَعَ اللَّهَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Those of you who believe and those who have been granted وَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمِ Granted the ilm, the knowledge and Allah is well acquainted with what you do Allah knows what you are saying Again, people are Cracking jokes about the ulama, about the shuyukh, the scholars, the inheritors, warathatul anbiya, the inheritors of the prophets, because the prophets, they did not leave any wealth. The legacy of the prophets of Allah is ilm, the ilm, the knowledge. That's what they left. And the ulama, they inherited that legacy. The ulama, they inherited that legacy. So they are the inheritors of the prophets. So we have to love the ulama, respect them from the bottoms of our hearts. Subhanallah. This beautiful hadith which is in Tirmidhi and Ibn Majah and Mustadrak al-Hakim, where the Prophet ﷺ said, لَيْسَ مِنَّا مَنْ لَمْ يُوَقِّرْ كَبِيرَنَا وَيَرْحَمْ صَغِيرَنَا ويعرف العالمنا ومن لم يعرف العالمنا حقه he is not one of us الله أكبر he is not one of us who does not show mercy to our young ones and respect our old ones and give our علماء what they deserve their due right you are not from أمة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم so you have to respect the علماء listen to the علماء because they are the ones who guide the ummah. As a matter of fact, the ulama are the true leaders. Learn from them, respect them, and may Allah reward the ulama of our ummah, and may Allah increase us in knowledge, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us our false mistakes and ignorance, and may Allah reward you immensely for watching this beautiful station, and may Allah preserve you and protect you wherever you are, Till we meet in another episode, I leave you in Allah's protection and Allah's safety. Ameen. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
to the sacred house in Mecca is a duty for Allah upon people. But what is it compulsory for a Muslim? Did prophets make pilgrimage to Mecca? Is visiting the Prophet's mosque in Medina related to the Hajj? What do we say and do when performing each rite of the Hajj? These questions and more will be answered on my program, The Hajj, in our series, The Five Pillars, only on Peace TV. An obligatory journey to the heartland of Islam for those who can afford. Join to know Dr. Ahmad Ibn Safuddin in the Hajj every Tuesday at 3.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 2 a.m. UK on Peace TV. Thursdays provide. In Britain, we are facing one big problem that are you Muslim or British? The space to talk. In India, back home, they ask, are you a Muslim first or Indian first? And we Muslims should know how to reply, how to turn the tables over. The place to knock. Why Trinity cannot be regarded in that sense, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. The opportunity to ask. But even if you agree that what the Christians say, that he was crucified, so if Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, died for three days, who controlled the world? That means even God died? The freedom to unmask. So there are various ways which we can prove the argument to be wrong. Let's meet Dr. Zakir every Thursday at 6.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 9.30 p.m. UK on Peace TV. Oh. The value of money in the hereafter will be measured by its proper use in the present. According to the glorious Quran, one of the best ways to use your money is to spend it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by spreading his message of Islam. Peace TV is a non-profit Islamic satellite television channel that is primarily dedicated for just that cause, the proper presentation of Islam. It's a great choice to invest in it and a golden opportunity to purify your wealth in a way that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Support Peace TV. Send your zakat and donations to IRFI Al Ryan Bank, 47 Calthorpe Road, Birmingham, UK, B151TH. Pound account number 011 IBAN GB49ARAY 3000830113230. Sort code 300083. Swift BIC code ARAY GB. B22. Please confirm your contribution at support at peacetv.tv. Support Peace TV, the solution for humanity.